host, journalist extraordinaire, Ms. Mary Gerard. Thank you so much, and welcome back. We have a little hiatus. A little bit of one week. Yeah. We're back, in, and you know, if you are just too busy to find out what's going on in politics in the Tampa Bay area, let us be your tour guide. Yeah, we cover it all. <laughs> And before we get started, I just thought um, I'd like to say something about the 911 memorial today. Okay. Yeah, if we could just take a minute and just think about all the first responders and, you know, all the life that was taken. And I think our world was completely changed right after that happened. And a lot of the things we're dealing with now and suffering from and the divisiveness and, and, and the painful experiences that we're experiencing. And uh, I just... Uh, hope you know one day there'll be unity in our community god so. bless all those souls yeah they went to heaven that day thank you for letting me expound on that all right let's get to the show we, we have got, a great we guest we got a really exciting guest yes today. yes we do we have miss amy weintraub and she is a social activist she's out there doing the work a lot so, of it. A lot of the work a lot of uh, when it comes to uh, reproductive health. Yes. So the reason I specifically asked for her to come is there's so much lies out there and misinformation that pol- some politicians are spreading, and knowledge is power. Yeah. And we want our voters to be educated. So, Amy, let's talk about you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Your Do you hear that applause? Yes, they love you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's such a pleasure to be here with you guys today. Mm. And um, yeah, you're totally right about um, knowing the facts, having those in your back pocket to pull out when we're talking with our neighbors and our friends about about people running for office and how to vote. It really does empower us as as you know as voters yes. trying to influence influence for change. So I'm all about spreading facts. Good, <laughs> good. So tell us a little about, a bit about you, your new unique story, how you got started, where you were born, all that good stuff. Well, I'm a mountain mama. I'm from the <laughs> hills of West Virginia. I wow. grew up in a tiny town called Spencer in uh, in Appalachia, in um, about an hour north of our state of the West Virginia capital, which is Charleston. And um, I had one of those, you know, relatively easy childhoods and upbringing where my, my parents were both school teachers, which in in Appalachia puts you solidly in the upper middle class oh, yeah. because um, there are a lot of folks that are struggling to to even uh, today poverty yeah. stricken absolutely. Totally. So um, anyway, I. Um, uh, but even as a youngster, I was very interested in politics. My parents are both conservative. They were Republican. So I got involved with that first and was a teenage Republican, um, president of my high school club and went to summer camp sponsored by the Republican Party every summer. And I really learned some great skills at those at those events and, and through that experience. And but then um, what actually was an exchange student for a year in Scandinavia. And boy, did that open my eyes to what could be yeah what I was, society um, could be like i was born and raised overseas i was born in germany raised in germany lived in central america two times and yeah that has affected every decision i make as an adult very different yeah very liberal very open very um okay about talking about it talking about their bodies um just a whole nother kettle of fish. It's true. And of course, regarding health care yeah. and health care provision, whatever. sexuality, yeah. all that's Prostitution true. Prostitution is legal. Uh, they have medical mandates. Yes. I mean, just so much smarter. And also um, just existing really easily and well in that type of socioeconomy. You know, I, I, it really shifted the way that I saw the world and the way I saw what, again, what could be that we could be, um, Appalachia could be a place <laughs> where every where, where there was no hunger, where there was no homelessness, where housing wasn't, uh, people weren't vulnerable losing, of losing housing or losing employment, and no matter what, there would be a safety net, et cetera. So I came back. I a came back. Fired fired up. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I was a Democrat from there on. Yeah. And, and um, in college, I was in, um, it went to Emory in Atlanta, and at that time, Operation Rescue, the anti-abortion extremists were really hot and heavy in the in the late 80s in Atlanta, and they were attacking the abortion provider there, and I became a patient escort as a volunteer, and that really, really uh, got me wow. into the movement. And I've been in reproductive rights ever since then. Professionally, I've done a few other things, like I ran an, an agency back in West Virginia that um, called Covenant House of West Virginia, which is a, a homelessness um, agency, um, and also it was the aid service organization. So I've dabbled in other 
parts of of the social justice movement, but I always come back to reproductive rights. And so West Virginia Free, which is the big pro-choice coalition, if you will, there was where I was employed before we moved to to Florida four years ago. And I worked there first as a board member and then as a staff member for years and um, and really, really became educated on the movement and understood how to identify, educate and activate followers or voters to um, you know, to get engaged. And even today, healthcare, number one issue, generally, yep. right. and reproductive health is part of that. It yes, is. it is. It's a package. You can't, you can't have one without the other if you're a woman. I mean, for sure. It's a huge for part sure. of our body. It's a huge pot, part of our lives, controlling. Um, being able to have agency over when we, when and if we have children, how many children, and the spacing between them often dictates our our success in getting education that we need in order to be productive citizens. It 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 dictates how we move up in our employment and our careers. Absolutely. You know? So it, it's a huge part of of you know our existence. Yeah, and it's uh, you know every bit of it has been politicized, like. The six weeks leave, you know, for mothers or and fathers, you know, a father can take six weeks and take care of the ba- the new baby and the mother can as take well as the six mother. weeks. Yes. Uh, they're putting it out there and, you know, it's getting shut down. I mean, you know, having children is um, it's huge and it needs to be supported and people need the health and benefits behind it. And uh, and the law and the laws to protect them as well. It's true. You brought up 9/11 earlier, and you know I'm sure most most people who look back at that time can point to it as a time that we were under attack, and we also were really scared. We were scared as a nation. And when people are are afraid or anxious, that's when they become more conservative. And since then, you know, we have seen. Yeah. We have seen uh, the conservative movement grow in ways that pr- wouldn't would it, weren't predicted, and um, had 9/11 not happened, I'm not sure that it would have. Yeah, that that that's true. It's usually some large scale critical factor for you know the Nazi takeover. It was the depression. They had a huge depression prior to Adolf Hitler you know, wheedling his way in there and. Uh, scapegoating the Jews and the banking industry run by Jews in that country. So there always seems to be a major catastrophe when we go into a a fascist uh, kind of environment or dictatorships. Now, Amy, um, you're involved with an organization called Progress Florida. Mm. Can you tell us about that? Well, that's my full time job. I work there. I work there as the reproductive rights program director. I started about a year and a half ago and I'm thrilled to be part of that team. Progress Florida is, well, you know, move on the big yes. national yes. thing. Oh, yeah. We kind of um, consider ourselves the Florida version of move on. Much of our work is done online through um, through social media, through email, and through our website. Um, we really feel like that is a way that we can influence the way that people are getting their information. So we, um, but our our mission is to is to awaken Floridians to a more progressive future and what that can be like and get them on board and moving our state toward that. So reproductive rights is a priority, but so is envir- the environment is a huge priority. We're interested in courts and making sure that our courts um, are not overtaken by by conservatives and that they are, stay fair and that yes. the people appointed to them are we fair-minded. We have a big problem with that with the Florida Supreme Court right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's an issue in our state. It's an issue throughout the country with our federal courts as well. Yeah, it's Now tell us, who is the head of that organization and what is your position there? Sure. Um, my boss, the director, is Mark Ferullo, and he was the founder of Progress Florida. Awesome guy. Um, I think Progress Florida is about 11 years old. Okay. And um, and the office is where? We uh, operate throughout the state. We have folks here in the Tampa Bay area as well as in Tallahassee. Okay. But we do consider ourselves a statewide organization, and I'm on the road a lot traveling to different do, parts. Do you do the uh, Hands Across the Bay for the cleanup at the beach? Was that your organization? No, that I believe that is Sierra Club. Sierra, okay. Or it, 
or we have a sister organization, Environment Florida. Yeah. And that Environment Florida. I'm so, I got confused with that. No, yeah. I, I apologize because I see it all over Facebook. I know you from Facebook yeah. pretty much. I get yeah. all your stuff. Environment Florida, Progress Florida, Move On. I get a lot of those uh, on Facebook. So you have a very vibrant presence. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. We work hard at it. Yeah. Now, there's another stuff. love of your life, Planned Parenthood. Well, and I have worked for Planned Parenthood in the past. I was their public affairs coordinator in West Virginia. And Planned Parenthood is doing more to um, to keep people from getting pregnant if they don't want to. And um, Planned you know, Parenthood. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, now it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, people are like, oh, don't they only do abortions? Yes, no. That's what they I do hear. Planned Parenthood as right, well. You know? right. For sure, over 90% of the services they provide have to do with either, you know, um, uh, birth control services, cancer screenings. Um, some Planned Parenthood health centers also offer maternity care. I mean, they do uh, so much more. In some places, Planned Parenthood's really the primary health care provider for women in those in those communities. So, yeah, Planned Parenthood that's is That's why a women go partner. crazy when you say, don't touch my Planned Parenthood. That's, for some people, that is their lifeline yeah, when right. it comes to health care. Right, they're not going to, you know, a $350 visit to the gynecologist. You're right. They can't afford it. Yeah. And if you're not working... You're going to Planned Parenthood. Yeah, that's it. And there are so many people who are working who still choose it because, you know what, they provide excellent care, unbiased, comprehensive um, um, reproductive health care. So lots of people choose it for a lot of reasons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, They're a great partner to Progress Florida. Okay. So how did uh, Progress Florida begin uh, and how did they evolve into the social networking system? Do you know anything about their history? I know that um, Mark and and my colleague Damian Fowler, who's up in Tallahassee, they had worked with other progressive organizations for years as organizers, and they saw a need as sort of um, the internet, as people started getting more and more of their news and communicating about politics online, they saw that there was a gap and that they could, with their expertise, really work to fill that. And they have, um, they're part of the Progress Now, umbrella organization if you will we have folks like ourselves working in states across the country and um you know trying again to get the information the right information the truth out to people who are eager Mm -hmm. eager to hear it so if i was interested in finding out the uh, many umbrellas you have organizations how would we get in touch with uh, your organization of course just uh, visit progressflorida.org and you will find out more than you ever wanted to know about (laughs) progress florida and the many issues that we work on that we care deeply about and that we're trying to activate folks around do you have events progress florida no we um although i often and some of my colleagues will go out and speak we do not host events on our own but almost almost never so we're an you, online you come on as a guest speaker sure. occasionally yeah i have yeah. A, at least a couple of um, i'm talking about reproductive rights i have a couple right. of speaking engagements a month okay. um so but and otherwise what are those yeah. like when somebody says I need you to talk. Who is calling you out? Who's asking for your help? And, and, and what do you usually explore with folks when you actually present? I talk about um, the, the state of reproductive health care in Florida, the, the issues that are often brought up in Tallahassee and Washington, D.C., about the courts. I talk, but I also talk about reproductive health care as it's delivered. We talk about abortion care and how common it is. We talk about um, things like the um, how health care is delivered differently to different sectors of our society. Yes, we did a show on that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, we talk about a lot of different things. But um, typically who invites me to come, uh, it, 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 it it tends to be women's groups um, like National Organization for Women or League of Women Voters groups, um, Democratic women, that sort of thing. But I've also been invited to speak to like the retired lawyers of Sarasota County. <laughs> okay. And, you know, it, it really... I, lawyers need to be educated on right. this People issue. People need to know. Yeah. Everybody needs yeah. to know. Men Doctors need to women. be educated, too. Any Some civic doctors. group, any uh, any um, anybody I interested? Say healthcare professionals. Yeah. 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 So, what is the state of affairs for reproductive rights in the state of Florida? What can you tell us about it? I know it's not good news. We have a lot of anti-abortion extremists who have been elected. 
they do not reflect That's very bad it is they do not reflect um the will of our of floridians though i mean our poll after poll poll after poll shows that 70 percent or more floridians believe that a woman and once a woman's decided to have an abortion she should be able to access that with respect and without shame and and without barriers yet year after safely year, and say of course safely and Year after year, we have these extremists in Tallahassee trying to throw barriers in the way. And um, why would they do that? I don't even know why they would do that. Some of them are diehard believers. I mean, they truly they truly are. Others are using women's health as a pawn in their game. They see as a way to get votes from other other extremists. And so it's a it's there's we you know why some of it it. is fear because they know that. there's going to be a lot less white people than minority people. There could be racial, for some people certainly, yeah. there are racial components yeah. too. It's already break time. I can't even believe it. I felt like we just got started. I think we did. <laughs> so let's pay some <laughs> right. bills and we'll be right back after these messages. Sounds good. Hey, this is Agent Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecues? Come see them two brothers in the grill. Located at 423 Virginia Street, Charleston, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some and get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. Hi, this is Trina Johnson with Caldwell Banker Real Estate, the real estate agent you've been looking for. If you want top dollar for your home or you're looking to make a purchase, call me at 813-244-6953. Again, 813-244-6953 and let me list your home. My name is Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. I got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college. You know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity. And to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing. And it was all thanks to Bright Futures. Florida has created more than one million jobs in only five years. And a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. Because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Hello, welcome back. Boy, do we have an exciting topic and a controversial one. But you know what? Women's health is huge. It's huge when you go to the voting box. And we have a social activist. I mean, her whole life is dedicated to reproductive health. Getting the facts out. She's on mission. Amy Weintraub with Progress Florida. Here's her fan club. Yes. <laughs> love it. It, makes, it makes my heart swell. You like Sally Fields. I can't believe they love me. No, <laughs> Speaking of loving you, let's get back to our topic. We, um, we're discussing the state of reproductive um, health and uh, legal issues in Florida. Yeah. So it's not good news. Right. I mean, you remember that last session they tried to make it harder for teenagers to access abortion Mm -hmm. by right now. um, The law is that one parent must be notified if a minor is trying to access abortion care. And they tried to make it so that the parent had to actually give permission, which is just another level of um, of of bureaucracy. Yeah, of bureaucracy. Yeah, See, and, and, yeah, and just a- access. It's really, really difficult. Most teens, by the way, do involve their parents, over 90%. Mm-hmm. But for those teens who don't or can't, there's a reason. Right. Often it has to do with abuse or neglect in the home. And, um, and so there's a reason that those teens need to be protected and they need to be allowed to access their right to reproductive health care without, um, you know, without uh, intervention. undue intervention. And you know what? No matter how old you are, you should have a right to what happens to your body. Yeah. 
we do have agency over that. Um, we should have agency over that. And they do, although, although any teenager who wants to get around these rules can go to a judge, I'll tell you, our, our research, the movement's research into how county courts deal with that and with a teenager calling to ask how she can get a judicial bypass, as it's called, very so much i mean some teens would have to call back multiple times to get the right answer to talk wow. to the right person and what 14 15 16 17 year old is going to be able to deal with that most adults can't deal. cannot navigate the court system absolutely it. not you got it yeah. so it really is a way of keeping teens from getting abortion care so that's one thing even though we were able to get it defeated we do know that it will it will rise its yeah. ugly head again and but, then the oh sorry oh no go ahead, go ahead. The, uh, we're, we're, other uh, can I can I just jump hey, in here? This is Daryl Johnson. This is Darryl owner Johnson, extraordinaire, uh, DJ CEO here. And, <laughs> and, and let me just, um, I guess, I, I would be in opposition of uh, my child uh, being be, uh, having an abortion without my knowledge. I, I would just, I, I think it's, I think that's a good idea for for a parent to be. To that's be because notified. you're a good parent. But now. Yeah. I'm pro-choice. Mm -hmm. I just believe that sometimes giving teens and children too many rights is a mistake. I totally, I mean, and as a responsible parent who is has a wonderful relationship with her, my 17-year-old daughter, I totally would hate to think that she couldn't turn to me in her in a time of need. Absolutely. And I want her, and I want to be involved with any health care issue that she has, and certainly something like abortion, I would want to be involved. But it's also, you know, the way you raise your kids. I was in sixth grade when we saw the movie about, you know, how babies were made. Yeah. My parents asked us, do you get that? Do you understand it? And we talked about it. And there were, you know, talk about condoms. I was also raised in Europe. You know, there was condoms and bathrooms. You can go in and get a, a condom wherever you went. You know, uh, sexuality and, you know, that kind of thing wasn't uh, shrouded and it wasn't hidden. And parents talked about it. My parents talked about it very early on. Yeah. If you get pregnant, this is what we can do. And we talked about it. It wasn't hidden away you know it's just that you're going to have those situations where the child cannot come to the parent right and if the child wants to come that's wonderful but if there's some extenuating circumstance including incest yeah we want to give them that way out yeah and and we also have one thing in our favor uh, we were talking about it earlier Teens are having less teen pregnancy. Is that correct? Can yeah. you give me some stats on that? The trends are, I mean, it's it's been happening for over 10 years that yeah. the teen pregnancy rate has gone down. Also, the abortion rate has gone down. Yes. We believe that has to do with um, increased access to birth control and better birth control with with um, much more use of long-acting reversible contraceptives. Tell like, us what that is. Yeah. Um, those are, are contraceptives that are usually like um, the IUD or the subdermal implants where um, the hormones are put under your skin, imp inserted, or a shot, where you don't have to go back and get a new one for six months. Or in the case of an IUD, a copper IUD can last 10 years. That is, you will not need any other form of birth control for 10 years. And as those have become more, more popular and more affordable, and through the Affordable Care Act, actually, um, you all have must that. be provided yeah. for free. Birth control must be provided for free by every insurance plan. Um, fewer women are experiencing unintended, for, fewer girls and women yes. are experiencing unintended pregnancy. So th we've had successes on that home front. And we were talking about men as well. Tell yeah. us about the vasectomies. I had a friend of mine who's you know, was thinking of having a, a baby with his wife. He got the a reversible vasectomy. And he's like, you know, if we choose to decide, you know, we'll take it from there. He took responsibility. He brought it up. I was shocked when I heard him say that. Yeah, vasectomy is an excellent, excellent um, alternative, or not alternative. It's an excellent choice yeah. that um, more and more men should consider. Uh, it is far less invasive than a tubal ligation. It does not require you to um, have it, hormones in yep. your body. It is reversible in most cases, depending on probably. And tubal ligations are for women. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, right. It's where the fallopian tube, tube is severed so that uh, the egg cannot get down into the uterus. Right. So, yes, right. 
the the vasectomy um, is a great choice that more I wish more and more men did um, did consider. There's a in fact here in Tampa where we are, there is a physician called um, Dr. Doug Stein, and he is um, available to do no and low cost vasectomies to men who um, who might need them. Who might who can't afford it? Yeah. And guess what? I got his number. He's right in Lutz, Florida. Eight one three. Nine four nine five nine six two. That's Dr. Doug Stein. There's and they're reversible. I mean, you know, if you do decide to have children when you're ready and you have the finances and the the right partner or wife, whatever you choose to do, you can have that kid. Well, yeah. l- let me just say after number four, I did have a. a oh, <laughs> he he's giving us all the information. I, I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. Is there a um, is there a, a time uh, or an age rather? for men that you re- would recommend or that Dr. Stein would recommend that one be had? I'm seriously I, I'm seriously in doubt that there is a specific time because right. that's going to vary from, from man to man. It's when they decide they probably don't want to have any more children. Right. That or any the, at all. Yeah, any right. any children, any mm-hmm. children or any at all. Yeah. I'd also mention that do- there was a documentary done by, about Dr. Stein a few years back. It's called The Vasectomist, and I believe it's available online. But it, he actually travels the world doing uh, no and low cost vasectomies. Vasectomies. Mm-hmm. That's good. I, I want to reach out to him because it's good to know. Yeah. A yes, we need to promote him. That. Yeah. Yes, it, it we might do. be a good show. Yeah. Um, do you run into ethnic disparities when it comes to birth control? I'm Hispanic. Uh, my heritage is from Mexico, and my mother has always told me my whole life her culture has a hard time with asking the partner, male partner, to wear condoms and to take any kind of responsibility in the birth control mode. Do you run into that? Do you talk about that? For sure, the, there are cultural differences when it comes to willingness of women to speak up about their needs of, on a whole bunch of things. But I'll tell you, there are systemic problems, too. We know that in um, in communities where women of color live, that there are fewer healthcare facilities. We know that there are fewer birth control clinics and abortion providers. So that means those women have to travel farther, often taking you know taking time, more time off of work and trying to find transportation to other parts of town or other counties to access care. There are real disparities. And this latest gag rule that the White House has put on Title X clinics, that's the big federal program that provides birth control, mm-hmm. primarily to low and no income women. Um, it it has had it is going to have a really, really big effect and, and harm more women of color than any now, than any other demographic. Specifically, how does that rule work? Um, that rule says that if you receive family planning money from the federal government, you are no longer allowed to refer women um, with unintended pregnancy for abortion care. You know, you will not talk with them about their their options. You can only talk about with them about continuing their pregnancy to parent. So a lot of our providers, such as Planned Parenthood nationally, are saying they're not going to be part of that program anymore. And that means they can't get those great federal funds that allowed them to provide services for free or at very low costs. Women are now only going to be able to go to like their local county health department to get that same level of care. And, you know, again, one of the misnomers and the lies and the obfuscation of the truth is that all Planned Parenthood does is give people abortions let's let's put the kibosh on that rumor what does Planned Parenthood do Planned Parenthood provides a myriad of services to women who need them Um, cancer screenings birth control vasectomies for men wow Um, I wasn't aware of that they do Um, they provide care for transgender folks they're 90 over 90 percent of their work is not at all related to abortion yeah and that's been driven home differently from pol- the political arena. Absolutely. We hear all kinds of ridiculous myths about flame Planned Parenthood. Yeah. So you, you talked about, and I, I know I'm injecting myself into the conversation. That's fine. Lady, it's interesting. But but I just, A man's I, point of view? I just needed yeah. to, to just jump in, so forgive me. But you talked about uh, the uh, not being able, to, well, let me, let me rephrase it. Uh, do we need to vote people out? to change the legislation. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, we do. It's only hope. Yeah. It, that's our only hope. And can the legislation change 
uh, as quickly as we get new people in office. You got it. Oh, yes. Wow. So yes. we need to talk about voting as well. Yes. That's people, show. people have to vote and they have to be ready to vote. They have to be informed about who the right choices are. Yeah, it was a sad statistic and um, that women got Trump elected. A high percentage of white women got yeah. Trump elected. It's sickening. Evangelicals, la, 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 all over the place, which, you know. You know, let's talk about Tallahassee. Who might we want to vote against? Jamie, <laughs> could one be Jamie Grant? <laughs> you know what? We have a lovely teacher running against him. Her name is Jessica Harrington. If you happen to be in that district, look for Jessica. Yeah. And we I have know. another, we have some a couple of teachers running. What about? Scott. I cannot pronounce his last name. Mr. H? Yes, Mr. H. Huttenstein. Huttenstein. I, I, <laughs> I speak German and I can't Another teacher, Dr. yes. Hutt. So we've had some yes. teachers step up, yes. which is yeah. very interesting. Yeah. And they're yeah. great speakers. Yeah. Um, so let's see who else we, we might want to vote Scott's going to be on our show. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the who month. Who else so. we might vote? I, I, Gus Bilirakis? Do I we want him you, out? Good. I don't know. Is is. If you care about women's reproductive health care, he does not vote the way he does That's not vote correctly. That's a, we got to vote against him. This is a, this we got to use names. This is a good point. Yeah, we got to use names. Is there a list of people we should know about that are for reproductive rights in the state of Florida? You know, um, and locally, can we get that information from somewhere? I um, that we what we need to do is watch for who now the National Organization for Women and Planned Parenthood's Action Fund who they endorse because the, that's the clearest way to see wh who our reproductive rights champions are, and um, so I, I'm sure that those are available on their Facebook pages or if they've made those endorsements yet. That's the place that I would trust. Uh, you said a lot of white women. Voted, voted Trump. A high theme. percentage of a high percentage yes, of got him elected. Do Do you all have a pulse on on what their position is now in terms of, of voting in twenty twenty? What I've read, great is question. That there are there are people who have been who know they were misled during his campaign. I think a lot of folks were aching for change, and that's why we saw so much uh, energy around Bernie Sanders' campaign as well, because these were, yes. you know, they were speaking sort of in revolutionary terms and, yeah. and really to upset the system. Trump uh, Trump spoke that. Sanders spoke that. And that really hasn't happened. Well, no, no, he's delivered change. It's just not the right change. Yeah. <laughs> Good and, point. And yeah. the people he was speaking to, their lives haven't improved. Yeah. And so my hope is that, yeah, some of those people are going to be the white women who voted against their own interests last time and will vote correctly this well, time. Well, I am very happy to say that 2018, we saw some white women in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. We saw some African-American women going to the polls That's and right. so i think we're going to see more yeah. of that in 2020 because women i think are going to be the big voice in the next election yeah there's more of us we're, we're a higher percentage than the men and, and health care you know. is a huge issue yes. on the ballot yes all most people who are going to the ballot box are thinking about my health care and know my family's health care and i know with your Acumen in the industry, yeah, you you know, and you're all for yeah, it. Medicaid for all, that's another one. Yeah, universal health care. Uh, did you know that most, 50% of the babies are born on Medicaid in America? I did. You have alerted me to that uh, statistic. I think we discussed it on one of our shows. It's yeah. surprising. I always learn something new, even sitting here hosting. Oh, yeah. Well, we got to go to the break. Break time. Someone's got to pay the bills. <laughs> So believe we hunted down 813 248 Everything gonna be okay, car Ricky, he coming He taking care of state of Florida, grab a pin of sundown 184361 Rick Plus your boy stay by. Just in case you missed it, I'ma tell you one more time. One eight four three six one Rick. Call Ricky. Ask Ricky is a legal medical referral service. The doctors and lawyers in our network are trained in handling auto injury claims and giving you the best medical treatment and recovery. Now one eight four four three six one Rick. That's one eight four four three six one seven four two five. Call Ricky. 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 Ask Ricky. 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 Hi, this is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of. 
School at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded? Then maybe you need to check The Way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based, project-based, and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your students a more excellent way at The Way. Hello. Welcome back. Well, this show is going real fast because we've got a a jam-packed hour. It's all about reproductive rights. And we need to know the facts. An educated voter is a smart voter. Yeah. And you know what? I am on the board for the League of Women Voters in Hillsborough County, and I invited a speaker to come in. You know who her name is? Could it be Amy? It's Amy (laughs) Weintraub. I get surprised. She's coming and she's going to speak to our group in Hillsborough County. When, Everybody where, is when, invited. When, where, give us the information. It's free of charge. And the only thing I'm asking is you come and get some education. And it's going to be Wednesday, September 18th. It's going to start at 6 o'clock. And it's going to be at the American Legion Building, Post 111. That's 6918 Is that Florida in Sly, Ave. Sly Avenue? Florida and Sly. Yeah, that's it. Right across yeah. the street from Bose Ice Cream. Yeah, bring so your questions, bones, right? And then come on over. Wow. Okay, Amy, what you gonna talk to us about? Oh, I'm gonna I'm <laughs> gonna fill your minds with great information that you need to be able to speak very eloquently and comfortably and confidently about reproductive health care. You can be a badass. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna empower you. Whoa, to wait a be minute. Empower the first us. time I've heard her use the A word. Whoa, she's all fired up. We know Angela's fired up when the A word comes out. <laughs> but that's actually that's exactly uh, the kind of fire I wanna light yeah. under under the league members and anybody from the public who sure. comes uh the league is the league of women voters is is so close to my heart it's my number one activity that i do outside my job I, i'm in the saint pete league that's where i live and um it i've made such great friends since moving here four years ago uh with through the league it's my favorite thing about living in saint pete you know our league like the hillsborough league has hundreds of members we have almost 500 members in st wow. pete and we only have 400 <laughs> <laughs> um, close enough but it's it's just such a fun and interesting group and it's a way you know i love the diversity in the league and and all of the issues that we work on should we be the- bringing our 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 daughters and sons or whatever sons i'm i'm from boys learning it is um a great way they are invited yeah everyone's invited it's a great way to i mean you'll go home with things to talk about with teenagers from this event so i would i would uh i would encourage it um, also, I will be in Lakeland for anybody who's over in Polk County on the 30th with the Polk County Democrats, um, and that's at the U- United Women's Club of Lakeland at um, 6 o'clock. And um, I'll be there with a couple of other groups like Planned Parenthood and a member of the clergy, who we're going to be talking about faith and reproductive rights. So a little bit of a different spin, but in oh, any case. Oh, wait. That's interesting. Faith and reproductive rights. What will you be talking about there? Because I know even in my ethnic community, Mexican community, you know, uh, faith plays a huge role in um, not sure. not even allowed to have contraception. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that from my experience working with women and for women that I have seen so many people of faith who also um, believe that women should be able to make their own childbearing decisions. And again, deciding when to have children, how many to have, et cetera. And um, we've got great groups here in Florida that are working really hard to make sure that a, that that the full spectrum of reproductive rights stays um, safe available. And legal. Yeah, and that includes Catholics for Choice. That right. includes the um, Religious Coalition for Reproductive Choice and the Interfaith, um, the Florida Interfaith 
Flicker, Coalition for Reproductive Health Care and Justice. Wow. Um, and that's a that's mostly populated by clergy. So, um, you know, there are lots and lots of people who are pious and full of faith and who still really, really work hard on this issue. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've heard people say, oh, you know, uh, um, contraceptive contraception is against my religion. So, you know, if the kid gets pregnant, oh, well. Yeah, that's okay. And I've heard it. I've yeah, heard I that growing you. up. I've heard it. Yeah. You know what? There are a lot of Democratic candidates, but one thing do I, that I do love is they all have unique voices. And I am very um, happy with Pete Buttigieg because he talks about his faith. He does. And he talks about how, you know, even though he's gay, he, he has a, he's a man of faith. And we have to remember there are a lot of people out there who are faithful, yeah. like me, yeah. and still believe in contraception. Yeah. It's changing because it wasn't that way when I was growing up Catholic. I mean, boy. And still believe in choice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's good. That's amazing. So if folks need uh, more information, where do they go to the Progress site? Sure. It's um, on on Progress Florida's Facebook page, certainly on the League of Women Voters of Hillsborough County, okay. on, their, on their website and on their social media outlets. You can find all the details. You can call Angela Birdsong. She's hosting it, 813-476-4837. Do you text Angela? I do. You can text me. I'm hosting it with a lovely lady named Lori Winkles. We're the co-chair. Co Lori? Used yes. to be my boss wow. when I was 18 years old. When I first moved to America, I worked at the uh, right across from the University of Tampa. She uh, was uh, my boss at Jennings and Epstein Advertising, who did the the rowdies, a kick in the grass. So I I um, told her about our show today on Facebook. I told her Wonderful. to well, listen. We're, it's going to be a very very good event, and one of the reasons why I wanted to host this is because there's so much misinformation. And just print out lies. What are you hearing about misinformation? I told you, what, I had a guy tell me that partial abortions where the baby's hanging out and they murder the baby and that you can have an abortion up to nine months. And I know that's not true. What are you hearing? Just uh, yeah, the same hearing thing? things like, you know, and usually when a baby, when there is a late term abortion, it's because the baby cannot support life. So we don't want to give people the impression that, hey, this would be a lovely baby, and the only reason we're aborting it is because we don't like the hair color or the eye color. No, it, it, the baby cannot support life. Like, it doesn't have a brain or a, uh, or, um, sure. a spinal cord or something, sure. you know? So these are really difficult decisions that women's, women are making with their doctor and God. And we want to just let the voters know, do not believe the lies. Yeah, it's just to get your vote. So that's yeah. why Amy's coming. It's true. And what kind of lies do you hear? I mean, do people come up to you and say outlandish things that you have to professionally redirect? <laughs> yeah, because so, you are a professional. Um, mostly, I talk to very friendly groups, groups that are really eager to hear the information. But um, of course, I see the fake news or the lies um, propagated on on the media, and it is very, very Fox disturbing. News. Yeah. Or even from our own president. I mean, you might remember during the, the debates that he had with Hillary Clinton, that's when, you know, this whole late term um, or uh, abortions that happen later in pregnancy, right. that, that's when uh, it, he, he really lit the fire under that, when he, he made totally false claims about women who have abortions late in pregnancy. It was it was ridiculous and hor it well, was and we all know how he feels about women. It's uh, yeah. really disingenuous to begin with. Sp For sure, Daryl has a comment. I do. Speaking of fake news, I was looking at your uh, your website, Progress Florida. Uh, you all have something on it about fake clinics. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Um, anti-abortion pregnancy centers. We have a hundred no. 191 of them in Florida and there are wow. at least I'd say 10 here in Hillsborough County we have about 10 in Pinellas County and these are places that um, that that set themselves up to look like health centers but in fact are anti-abortion operations and they try to lure women in um, in order to be able to counsel and I'm putting the word quotes around counsel talk women out of accessing abortion care. Their main mission is to keep women from, from choosing abortion. They often will set up right beside an actual, um, an actual health clinic and call themselves things like choices or women's center so that women will be tricked into coming in there. They don't actually provide birth control. They certainly don't provide abortion or referrals for abortion. 
So we call them fake clinics, a sort of, um, you know, a nickname. You got some names uh, that we need to be aware of that are here in Hillsborough and Pinellas County? Sure. Um, give me one second and I'll get the list. Um, but again, we are, we want to, and we definitely want to get the word out to, to Hillsborough and Pinellas County women about them. Let's see. Do they do um, actual ultrasounds in those clinics? That's one of the techniques that they do is they'll say free ultrasound, free ultrasound. Okay. And, okay. But the folks who are doing the ultrasounds, they're uh, often not trained in medicine and um, they're not nurses. Sometimes they are, but often they're not. Ugh. You don't have to be a trained you, in order to do an ultrasound. You don't have to have any specific certification in Florida. All right. In Tampa, we have a woman's place medical clinic. A sure women's Where is that? Did, that we, they have two locations, one on University Cove Place and one on West Kennedy. The one on West Kennedy is right beside an actual abortion provider. An actual, close to the universities. Mm -hmm. mm. That's another. They often go where young women mm -hmm. with unintended pregnancy will live. One on Nebraska Avenue is called Assure Women's Center. It's also known as Oasis Pregnancy Care Center. And Brandon Choices Women's Center. In Ruskin Choices Women's Center, there's a Foundations of Life Pregnancy Center operated by Catholic um, Adoption With Services. That, one. okay. that one's on Armenia Avenue in Tampa. Guiding Star Tampa. This one's really problematic. It's in Lutz. Um, they actually offer this thing they call abortion reversal pill. And there's no science behind it. It's totally misproven. But their claim is that if you take medication abortion and change your mind, they have a medication that can stop it. But it's just not the They're case. They're saying that they can stop an abortion? That's been a medi through medication abortion. So if you take the medication abortion, they claim that you, they have a, a medication that will stop it, but it doesn't work. Wow. Knights Women's Center, also in Tampa. And Pregnancy Center of Plant City. Mm -hmm. That's the final one in Hillsboro. Well, wow. it, through all that, I came up with um, a question. Let's say you're not sure whether you want to keep your child or not. What would Planned Pregnancy do about that? Is adoption an option? Did they discuss that? What did you decide to keep it? Yeah, all women's health center, you know, actual women's health centers, of course, will talk about the three options. What are those? Continuing the pregnancy to parent, making an adoption plan, or abortion. And um, any uh, actual caring doctor who's on the up and up is going to provide all those legal options. Okay, sorry, I got a little distracted there. Not at all. Um, okay. And that would happen certainly at Planned Parenthood. Yeah. It will happen at, at your own private practice OBGYN unless they happen to be an anti-abortion person. Yeah. And at, you know, say your, um, your typical community-based uh, family planning clinic. Yeah, okay. I hadn't been to one, so I wasn't sure all that I they offer. I have been to one. Yeah, yeah. I, I ran into one when I was going to um, Exciting Ottawa Baptist. There was a lady running one out of there. I'm not, she does. She, she wasn't affiliated with the church. Right. <laughs> no, I no, no. You her. met the lady. I met the lady. Yeah. Are you yes, talking yes. about you went to an anti-abortion pregnancy center or you went to a, what What? What did, what kind of place? It was a clinic. Mm. Um, it might have been the Oasis one. And uh, I went in there because she was looking for volunteers. And uh, I learned all about the clinic. And I think they were, tr if they weren't doing the ultrasounds, they were trying to. Mm -hmm. But their whole thing was they had clothes for, for new moms and diapers and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. but they wanted to get the woman to basically change her mind about uh, abortion. Mm -hmm. That's their whole objective. Most of them are faith-based, and they come from that place we were talking about earlier, yeah. where they really believe that it is in opposition to the their religious beliefs. Yeah, and it is big. I mean, I'm, I, oh, I hear the music. Excuse me, I cut myself off. <laughs> Show's going really quickly, so we're going to take this our last break. Is that right? Okay. Already. Too quick. So we'll be right back after we pay the bills. This is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House, bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests right here on In Touch Radio. 
This is Linda Archie with Tyre Temple United Methodist Church. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month at the Village Market East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Free parking, free admission, fresh produce, live entertainment, vendor shopping, and delicious cooked food. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month beginning June 22nd. For vendor information, call me 1-888-991-2502. See our ad in In Touch News or Florida Sentinel. Please call me at 1-888-991-2502. The Village Market at East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Ray Williams Funeral Home, providing the highest quality, professional, and caring service for your family. Call Jeffrey Rhodes at 813-253-3419. That's 813-253-3419. Or visit him at 301 North Howard Avenue, Tampa, Florida. Ray Williams Funeral Home, for the finest care and quality service. Dowers Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. One darn second. America since 2017 is suffering from a serious hiccup. 9-11 is seriously overused in a distasteful manner. Every day the cops are calling on an innocent, innocent person of color. It amazes me that America has come down to this. A person of color becomes a person of interest. Waffle House, the dorm, Starbucks is a few. This is not the lunch counters, sit-ins of the 1960s. 2019, harassed simply for being black and proud. Hold on one darn second. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. Pre-order my new book, Motivational Moments, at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. Okay, we're back to Tampa Bay Politics. And boy, do we have a hot topic on the table today. We're talking about reproductive rights. And um, just to let you know, we are having a great event. And that's September 18th. That's um, coming up soon. And Amy will be our speaker for the League of Women Voters. And we were talking about all the advances that we have now when it comes to contraception. Yeah. And uh, how lucky we are to have all the options available to us that are that work. Yeah, and uh, and some misnomers. I guess we can clear it up. We were talking about the um, after pill that's uh, available in America and the one that's coming out uh, from uh, Holland. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us the difference, that sure. what's been going on with that? Okay, so uh, one of the questions I grapple with or I that folks grapple with and ask me about is what's the difference between emergency contraception, sometimes it's called the morning after pill, sometimes it's called plan B. Um, what's the difference between that and medication abortion? Are they the same or not? They are actually entirely different. And let's talk about let's talk about each of them. First, Medication um, first emergency contraception. Now, this is something that you take if you have unprotected sex and you don't want to risk getting pregnant. Um, you can take it up to five days after unprotected sex. You can buy it um, in the grocery store. No, actually, you can, you can buy it in the grocery store. At Publix, it's behind the counter. Right. But at CVS and at Walgreens, it's available right out on the aisle with the other family planning stuff like mm-hmm. condoms. Mm-hmm. You can buy it. It's about $45 for a dose. Now, honestly, my, my teenager, she is not sexually active to my knowledge. But I have I bought her a packet of it just to keep in her medicine cabinet in case anything happens. And yeah. That way she doesn't have to ask me about it. It's there. And if any of her friends, I told her if any of your friends need it you know it's there for you so it's something to keep in mind that if someone has unprotected sex whether it's because they were assaulted or whether it was because you know they they things went too far yeah Yeah, things um, happen you know to have that backup birth control is a good idea but again you can get it you can get it at at virtually any drugstore in in florida um and but medication abortion is an entirely different thing. It's an entirely different drug. So you might know it as RU486. Oh, yeah. Um, now, this has become approved by the FDA more than 15 years ago. But in the United States, because of the politicization around, around abortion, the FDA has made it so that only doctors can give it to a woman, at least the first of the two drugs that make up the, make up the protocol. 
that so a doctor has to enter into a contract with the pharmaceutical company directly. This is not a drug you can get at a drugstore in the United States. Oh. It's so unnecessary. This this level of, of regulation is ridiculous. But anyway, um, so you would go to a doctor that has it. Generally, that's going to be in an abortion provider, but there may be a few pro- doctors in private practice that have this drug. Do any gynecologists keep it? Maybe a few, okay. but this isn't something they'd advertise. Okay. Um, so uh, they have it in stock. Now, what drug does your doctor have in stock? You know, maybe some vaccinations, but no other drug. You know, maybe if they're a cancer doc, they may have some right. chemotherapy drugs in mm-hmm. stock. But, mm-hmm. you know, this is, and by the way, this drug is entirely safe. Research shows that it is safer than Tylenol. And I'm not saying that flippantly. It is a safe drug. But again, because of the politics around abortion, it's so highly regulated, you can only get it from a doctor. So um, that's the way that it's given. Now, in other countries, you can actually buy it right off of the shelf. They call it the missed period pill. It brings on it brings on the period. It brings on miscarriage. It is an abortion. It ends a pregnancy. So, right, and you can take this how long? Up to eleven weeks. Okay. Up to eleven weeks um, after the missed period, or actually after the date of your last period, I should say. So, up to eleven weeks of gestation. The uh, interesting thing you mentioned about uh, women on waves, that's a Dutch operation. It's a Dutch um, gynecological practice. They used to operate the, the, the clinic on a ship that would go off the coast of Ireland and women would be ferried out to international waters to access abortion because abortion was illegal in Ireland. Well, guess what? They don't own that ship anymore. They now are just mailing medication to women who need it all over the world. They were not shipping to the United States, though, because we have pretty, you know, we've had pretty good access to abortion care. But things have gotten so bad that last fall, because they've gotten bad because of barriers and clinics closing. Last fall, the 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 organization, and now it's called AidAccess.org, A-I-D, AidAccess.org. They started shipping to American women. So you would go online, you have a video conference with a doctor in Europe, They, you, you have to prove that you are pregnant and that you're within the 11 weeks, and they um, order the prescription online and it's shipped to you at your home and you receive it within a week. Our research, the movement's research has shown that the medication ordered from that place is 100% pure or whatever, it's it's good. Yeah. And often it's shipped from um, from Indian pharmacies, interestingly, but it's, it's great, um, it's effective, and it is safe. So I think that if Roe is gutted or overturned in the future, this will be the way we'll go. We're not going to go back to pre-1973 times when up to 5,000 American women died a year from botched abortions. We're not going to see that. Instead, people will be turning to medication and abortion ordered over the internet. Well, I already heard that the FDA was uh, trying to forbid the Dutch uh, from doing that. They sent a cease and desist letter, but so far the the, uh, aidaccess.org is ignoring it and moving forward. With, okay. with providing it. And I know, I mean, I've the latest, I haven't seen recent figures, but the first four months out, the first quarter after they started shipping, over 22,000 women had ordered, American women had ordered that medication oh, wow. through the access. Do you know the uh, name of the pharmaceutical company that provides it to the Dutch? It is all, per, the, the pharmaceutical company is the same. It's the only producer worldwide. There is going to be a generic come out and it is called... Uh, Danka. I'm thinking it's something like. Let me just. Um, I, I just wonder if it were, if it was an American company. It. it, it uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it might be a surprise. French company. Okay. Yeah. Because that is where I know it was discovered in France. But um, anyway, and they have had the only. They have been the only provider for all of this time. But just now, it's it's going to be. And, and how long has it been available? In the United States, over 15 years. Wow. Yeah. About 45 percent of American women who go into an abortion provider choose that. Fifty five percent are still are still choosing surgical abortion. But we're believing that that number will increase as more people understand how safe it is. I'm sure there's a lot of women who walk into a provider and don't even know it exists. Oh, for sure. 
and um, and they only think of surgical abortion, so that's what right. they would choose because that's what they really know. The other thing is it's only, again, it's only effective up to 11 weeks. Right. So a lot of women are past that when they go, when they, when they go for the option. procedure. It's and not a, yeah. the 11 weeks is, is uh, after their last period. Yeah, 11 weeks gestation. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it, it'd actually be like, um, well... That's not for me to. You know, it, the the, the way that gestation is figured is is very tricky. Uh, even politicians, you'll hear them when they're debating. They don't know what they're talking about when they say twenty one week. You know, they'll try to ban abortion past twenty one weeks or past six weeks. We saw a six week abortion Heartbeat. ban. That's what they're trying yeah. for. That six week abortion ban in Florida. They tried. The, we saw Conception. that. We we probably will see that again. But anyway, yeah, um, they don't know what they're talking about. What six weeks is? Six weeks after the last menstrual cycle. Six weeks after after conception. Uh, it, it there's a lot of confusion around that too. Mm-hmm. I, I could imagine a young a young girl being confused with that. You know it. You know it. So if uh, the, the fact is, though, the earlier in pregnancy that the abortion happens, the more the likely it is that medication abortion will be effective, the easier it is on the woman. So um, try not to delay care. Yep, absolutely. We got okay. one minute left. One minute. Oh. We want to see you all down at the American Legion building, oh. post 111, that's 6918 North Florida Avenue, Wednesday evening, September 18th, to see Amy. We'll talk a lot more about all this stuff then. Yeah, and you do and a little flashcard thing, don't yeah, you? Yeah, we'll do some interactive exercises and get... It's not boring. It will It will not be. And take a peek at the uh, League of Women Voters website, find out what they're up to. Uh, take a peek at the Progress website. There's Progress a lot Florida. of things Dot. out there. Mm-hmm. And if you're a man, check out the vasectomy stuff. <laughs> it's about time men to start taking a little bit of responsibility. There's no reason why you shouldn't be involved because yeah, so many ways you can. Absolutely. And we need to get, I think we need to get more men on board with uh, the uh, contraceptive aspect and of they're, preventing they're pregnancy. In these issues. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, if that's a decision going on in the home. He's got, the guy's got something to say about it. Good. Unintended Good. pregnancy affects men too. It, it, yeah. it Just like it affects everybody. Yeah. Sometimes a man has said, we can't have one more. Yeah. He'll say it. Yep. I, yeah. I, 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 we need to hear more of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's, Felt like a minute. Are we good? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone. Here we go. It's such a there pleasure to be here. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Amy. Thanks. All right. How do you think this is?